the power of watts. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at watts and how they can be used in your images. And in this case, to blend a couple of images together to hopefully try and get a realistic effect at the end. Watts have been used in cinematography for many, many, many years. I'd actually have to look it up to see how long they've been actually used. And photography as well. So you can get watts from the Skylum website, you can get them from other places on the internet, and I'll show you a couple of places during the video as well that you can get them. So hopefully this video will let you see the power of watts and how they can be used to your advantage. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, for this, what we're going to do is I'm going to begin with basic edits first. And the first ones will be, for me, the colour. Again, the blues. So I'm going to drop the saturation of the blues and the luminance of the blues within the sky there. I'm quite happy with that. But I don't know if you noticed it did affect in here. So I'm going to edit the mask with the brush. And I'm going to erase the effect that I applied to the tongue there. So that's the first step. Next, I'm going to pull back the yellows ever so slightly in here. I'm going to pull back the saturation and I'm going to pull back the luminance just to around there. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go in and adjust the Orton effect. And I'm going to pull that just to around there. Not too much with this. I just want subtleties within this image. And then we're going to try and match it as best we can so that it looks like one image is a taken in camera in shot, in one shot. So the Orton effect. The next thing I am going to do in here is I'm going to go in and add a very soft glow. And that's that. I'm not going to add any more. Because the main part of this is the watts and the watt here is hopefully we can see the yellows here we can see the the yellow in here and the yellow here i want to blend this as best i possibly can using watts so i'm going to choose a watt which hopefully will give it a better cinematic look and as if as i said as if it was shot in camera so Within the watts, you have all these watts here that you can cycle through. And as I stop in some of them, you'll notice that they cycle through. For example, I'm going to use that one there, Gloria. Although that's portrait toning, that could have possibly worked for this image. So don't think you have to stick to what is here. For me, the best one for me for this image I found was Long Beach. I thought that matched the image best. So I'm going to use that one. But before I use that one, I'm going to show you in here that you can load your own custom watts. You can go in here. These ones I purchased from the Watt Hut. They're doing a deal just now. And these are for moving image as well. But they're also for still image, static image. You can use watts in any software that allows you to use the cube files. So you can use these for anything. And like Batman, Dark Knight, these are all taken from film and they've matched a lot to the colour theory of the film as best they can. And these ones are actually really, really good. So that, that's why I got them. And I'll put the link to the Lot Hut below if you're interested in that as well. The other thing that you can do with the Lots is you can go in and download new Lot files. And this will take you to the Skylon page where you have lots in here that you can get. You can pay for some and some are free. There is many more lots available throughout the internet and as long as they're cube files, they should work okay in Luminar. But I would test them first just to check. So I'm going to close Chrome here. Then I'm going to continue with this. As I said, the lot that I am going to go for is Long Beach. Los Angeles, for example, the dragon was too purple. Palm Springs, two orange and yellow. Riverside, again enhanced the yellows that I've just taken out of the image. San Diego, again two purple. So Long Beach for me worked best. This makes it look as natural as it possibly can. What I'm going to do now is I am going to pull the amount of that back slightly. The default amount is 30. So I'm going to pull that back slightly to around there. Only a couple of notches. But if I show you where we came in, 
at the beginning as we loaded the file to where we are now. Already it looks better, it matches the scene better. Some of you may like it like that because there is a lot of light in the image, but for me it just didn't match it perfectly. So I'll turn that back off. Next I am going to go in and add a new adjustment layer. In this new adjustment layer, and this may seem contradictory to what I've just done, I'm going to increase the light, the exposure. So I'm going to push the exposure just slightly, not too much at all, 23. I'm looking for a nice image in here, a nice blend between the two, a nice mix. But for me, this tail lightened up too much. So what I'm going to do, because remember you're looking at the entire image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the mask with a brush and I'm going to erase the tail and you should see a difference as I do this. And I'll do it quite liberally for the purposes of this video, but you should see a difference in here when I do that. I'm actually going to make the brush a bit bigger because I'm going to let it also affect some of the grasses in here and climb the trees slightly in there. So what we've just done is left that area there. Next thing I am going to do is I am going to add a new adjustment layer again. And in this adjustment layer, I am going to add sun rays. So for the sun rays, I'm going to push the amount to there. But as you can see, the sun's over here, so we have to move that across. So I'm going to use the place sun center. That for me is too much. That's not the kind of style I'm looking for for this. I'm looking for as much realism as I can possibly get with this. So I'm going to bring that into around there. The amount of the sun rays I'm going to pull back. I'm looking for subtlety within this image. So pull it back to about there. Leave that overall look at 50 sun rays length. I'll pull back slightly say to about there. So we can still see them, they're still in the image, but they're not overpowering the image for this. Penetration of them, I'll leave advanced settings, number of sun rays, 50 is okay. The sun radius, I'm going to push up to around about there. And you can see that that affected the entire image. I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to leave everything there and I'm just going to flick that on and off just so you can see the difference, again with the subtlety, and hopefully that works. For me, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna leave that at that. Again, next thing, add new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, I'm gonna get into the pro mode, and I'm gonna get into dodge and burn. And within the dodge and burn, what I'm going to do is just enhance small areas. And in this case, it's lighting. I'm going to take the strength right back because I want everything subtle in here. And although I'm taking it back here, I could paint it 50 and then I could draw back the overall amount. But I'm better building it up and then drawing it back than putting in too much and having to redo it. So I'm just going to paint the odd bit in there, down there, and you'll see that along there, there, just a wee touch there in here, possibly just there. So if I flick that on and off, you should see a subtle difference. And that's actually enough for me. So I'll show you the before and after. So there's the before and the after. Before and after. So hopefully, I'm quite happy with that. Hopefully you can see the power that the LUTs have. We could have done all this in adjustments, but by adding the LUTs, it gives an overall global effect, which again, you can edit. But there, it makes the image match better. So next thing I am going to do is I am going to click Apply. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully it lets you see how LUTs can be utilised in your images and in this case to blend the two of these images together to create hopefully a realistic looking final image. Be great if dragons were in the woods but in this case they aren't so unfortunately we have to blend images together to get them.
If you've enjoyed this video, please check out the other videos in the channel below. And if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video and stay safe.